In December 1969, George Harrison, along with Eric Clapton, played with Delaney and Bonnie on their UK tour. During a break in the tour, Roy Carr interviewed George Harrison in the lounge of a Liverpool hotel. In the previous week's issue of the New Musical Express, the magazine already claimed that the Beatles were on the brink of splitting up. Journalist Alan Smith wrote, I may be wrong and I hope I am, but these are dark days for the Beatles. I begin to wonder how much longer their association can stand the strain of their own individual talent. In that same issue, there was an article about John Lennon titled Bore, Fool, or Saint, in which Alan Smith defended Lennon from all the recent attacks he had gotten from the press. At the time, many publications said that Lennon had become an embarrassment and a man too interested in his own attention after posing nude with Yoko, and the seven days in bed, among other things. George Harrison, however, still seemed to have plans for the Beatles and in the interview he said he hoped the Beatles would play live again. When asked about whether he'd like to get some friends together to do live gigs, he responded. Quite definitely but I'd like to do it with the Beatles, but not on the old scale that's the only drag. With the Plastic Ono Band and me playing with Delaney and Bonnie there's no expectations because it's really quite anonymous, you just gotta do whatever you can do. Once the Beatles are advertised, people expect too much. I'd like to do the Beatles thing, but more like Delaney and Bonnie with the Beatles augmented with a few more singers and a few trumpets, saxes, organs and all that. I have done. I always try and play as much as I can on sessions but it's not the same. The fun of it is being up there not knowing what you're doing in front of a lot of people. I hope the Beatles will tour again but it's so difficult, not just to get us together to do it but I just couldn't stand going through all the police and crowds and helicopters into the Shea Stadium and the scene that goes with it. It's like Bob Dylan because I know that he's gone through the cycle where he's getting back into wanting to play. That's a good point. I'm glad you asked because it means that it will last longer if you play it more and more and it gets better. There's a lot of music around that sounds really great and then you play it twice and you're not interested. I've found that the new album by the band is one of those albums that grows on you the more you hear it. Well that's life really, you're supposed to get better. It's like the Rolling Stones honky tonk women. It's musically so good, even though it's only three chords, yet it's really so good. No not really, we've always been influenced by anything good around us, or whatever we like rubs off on us and then the moment we write a song and the Beatles record it then it becomes a Beatles tune. It could be that on some of our tunes we try and imitate somebody else. It's like things in the early days. We recorded things like Twist and Shout or You Really Got a Hold on Me and people thought that they were our own songs and that we'd written them. If, as the Beatles, we were to cover say Elvis Presley's new record then it would be like a Beatles record. Even if we tried to copy it note for note, we couldn't. That's why we got that sort of sound or whatever they thought was the Beatles sound. I agree. For a period of time, about two years, I got out of rock and roll and I became involved with sitar, which I still love. I still think that kind of music is transcendental, but I went through a cycle, which finished with me doing a film clip with Ravi Shankar for a film he made. After that I got into New York and happened to stay at the same hotel as both Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix, and it seemed a natural thing to start getting back into guitar. I had known Eric just a little bit before then and it was really through his indirect influence on me that made me want to play a bit more and take much more interest. That's why I've always placed Eric Clapton's guitar higher than others, because it's quite easy in a way to improvise and play things but if you listen to Eric he always takes it somewhere and progresses it, actually resolving it. With something it was just that we kept on playing it over and over until we played it so much I didn't know what it was when we made the backing track. I came back to it after four months as we'd been on holiday, and when I listened to it I was quite pleased with it. At the time of leaving it you can always try and get it better and better. Even when you make a record that people can say was almost perfect, you're so dissatisfied with it because you know the further along the line you take it, the further there is to take it and the more subtle it becomes. I listen to something now and I could do it a whole lot better. Actually I'd like to have about four acts on Apple who were really great and that's it. I'd like Apple to be the Beatles, the Stones, Bob Dylan, Eric Clapton, Delaney and Bonnie and that's it. Who needs anything else? 
Oh yes, I think Billy Preston's very good and eventually he'll get through to the people. No, I think most people who make records go through a period where they don't generally play their own stuff. They'll play it when it's new and then they're usually fed up with it by the time it's released. But I may play it after a year or two years suddenly some night for some reason, like nostalgia. I may dig out something in particular just to check up because normally you think that's good at the time but you come back to it two years later just to try and relate with yourself.